uh, so that wouldn't wouldn't work. And and as far as I understood, for all the missions that they're planning, they're not planning to send people first there. They're planning to send robots and self-assembling structures that are going to kind That's of right. build themselves out over time, right? And that, then that is the nominal concept. Yeah, um, it remains to be seen whether we can. Well, I mean, I say it remains to be seen, but I think we're demonstrating all the time that we can do remote uh, work on uh, on foreign on. Uh, spaced bodies through the likes of the rovers on Mars or the, the Chinese rovers on the moon at the moment. None of them have done any direct 3D printing, so that would be interesting to see because there's a lot of mechanical stuff. As I was saying, there's like a lot of maintenance to keep yeah. these things going. Yeah. Um, so what would we need? Uh, robots that have human-like hands that could someone could like with 3D glasses kind of like work on it Maybe. directly? But the problem there then is that uh, telepresence is difficult unless you're in orbit of the planet that you're doing it on. So, for example, if you were trying to operate a rover on Mars, you or a, a robot on Mars, I should say, you've got a at least a three-minute one-way light travel mm. up to potentially 10 to 15 minutes of one-way light travel. And then to see whether it's actually worked, you've got the same time again for the bounce back. The most so horrible not- lag in gaming history entirely yeah <laughs> so you would need to be in orbit in a spacecraft uh, doing that kind of telepresence stuff so that's uh yeah reliability is going to be a question on these kinds of things but um even if it does require people to be on site um with the kind of spacecraft that we're looking at now we could be sending a spacecraft that just lands there and you live in the spacecraft um like for example i'm thinking of uh, spacex's starship that's mm-hmm. a huge volume to live in anyway so uh the benefit of building the surface habitats is that you get better radiation protection <clears throat> and you don't you don't need to uh to fly back in them like it they're going to need the spaceship back so it's going to have to fly home at some point so you build yeah. yourself a, a habitat on the surface um and yeah it, there's already pilot programs for that kind of uh, large-scale 3D printing for constructing habitats happening um, all over the world, actually. I was going to say in Africa, but that's just the initial pilot programs were there where they would take uh, local materials from the ground, run it through a some kind of cement mixer-style thing, and they had a massively scaled-up 3D printer that was just spudging out the cement into the shape required to build a house. Um, but there was a video that hit the internet there middle of last year, I think, from China, where there's a company that is literally building mansions just mm-hmm. by 3D printing them. Yeah, uh, yeah, Very impressive stuff. And then there was a NASA-sponsored um, Martian Habitat competition. And the, the winner of that was a 3D printing system that was taking the simulated Martian regolith that they were giving. Sorry, I should explain. Regolith just means soil. It's just, oh. you know. Earth. without without the organic element uh, that we have on earth but um so, it's so just the dry earth yeah yeah exactly um and they were they were giving the teams uh like a dump truck full of this soil and going work with that <laughs> and, <Do> uh, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so these guys printed this structure that was like a barrel shaped um tower and it would they would ship up some small plant in windows and stuff and doors uh but print everything else and then like inflate a, a airproof or a atmosphere sealed bladder inside that structure then so the the printed structure provides strength mm-hmm. and the air seal is provided by this bladder that they inflate inside and uh it was it was reasonably successful i seem to remember right at the end of the competition the um they leaned a digger on the top of this thing to test its strength and it did collapse but, but they still won the competition um and it was like a quarter scale version so i would imagine under lower martian gravity etc etc it'd probably be yeah. okay <laughs> yeah um i've seen some simulations of how drones are building out habitats on mars um, you know um it, it looks really futuristic and cool um yeah. flying and little driving drones um Mm -hmm. and structures they would build wouldn't be exactly the same as the ones on on earth right uh we would have like 
cubicle shaped uh, houses, but uh, what I've seen them build is more like a sphere shaped, uh, more like dome shaped objects. Yeah. A lot of that is down to just the physics of holding in the atmospheric pressure that you need for, for people and earth life to survive in because the atmospheric pressure on Mars is under 1% of that of earth. It's practically a vacuum. Hmm. And so you need to contain the pressure that we're used to living in within these buildings. And the best vessel for containing pressure is a sphere. Yeah. So, so that's why, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's why you tend to get cylindrical or spheroid um, structures. And mm -hmm. another reason that, for example, I was just thinking of the International Space Station as an example of uh, the sort of shapes of structures you might see. But actually, the main constraint on the shape of structures going to the International Space Station is that they need to fit uh, within a rocket's fairing. And that's typically cylind cylindrical and, and yeah. long. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see the full version, go to the Uncle Gold Podcast YouTube channel or watch the next clip.